Hi, everybody. I'm Rob Sabin, the editor at Projector Central, and I'm here with uh, Billy Harrison and Jeff Perry from Optima to talk a little bit about what's in their Projection Expo booth. Now, I know, guys, we have a, a combination of both some home theater and some commercial products. Why don't we start uh, talking a little bit about the uh, the home theater products first? And I think the first thing that was on your list uh, was the UHD 35, right? Correct, 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 right. Um UHD 35 represents um, a new generation um, in 4K standard throw projection, uh, you know, bright, right? So high lumen count uh, plus low input lag. So it represents uh, a second generation of support for 1080p to 240 hertz. um, And then also for uh, 4K 60 hertz, um, we're now, you know, a new milestone where we're now below 20 milliseconds at uh, 16 milliseconds. Yeah, it's a, it's a very it's a very affordable and uh, an and impressive projector for the price. Twelve ninety nine street price. Actually, we just got uh, our completed review of this product and I have uh, haven't uh, done the edit on it yet, but I looked at it and I know John Higgins, our reviewer. Uh, reviewed it very favorably. 3,600 ANSI, as you said, single chip 4K DLP, right? Right. Um, the lamp on that is also, you get a lot of hours out of that lamp, right? Right, right, right. You know, a 240 watt lamp um, using dynamic mode, of course. So dynamic black, um, you can achieve up to 15,000 hours. Yeah, that's um, a, that's if a, you run bright mode, which a lot of people do, <laughs> um, you're at about 4,000 hours. Yeah, uh, I, I'm always amazed though that we can get 15,000 hours now out of these lamps. Right. I mean, you're starting to approach laser territory, and then of course you were talking about, uh, you know, obviously the uh, the low input lag on this thing. So um, 1080p at 240 from a PC, you can get down to 4.2 milliseconds. Right, 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 right. right. Which, which is a new milestone, right? Um, yeah. In the last generation product of UHD 30 and UHD 50x, we were at uh, 16 milliseconds. Mm-hmm. So the single chip DLP, of course, and that's really what it comes down to, um, the single chip DLP, you know, brings some big advantages. And that is lower latency because of less frame loss, because it's a one chip package. <laughs> right. So um, that, that's pretty big. And then for 4K60, we're down to 16. Mil- we're down to 16 milliseconds. Yeah. Which that's- really is putting us in prime territory because to be honest i mean if you measure a lot of the uh televisions including even some of the current models where tv guys focus on gaming most of those are like seven to ten milliseconds Mm -hmm. so so uh so at 16 yeah we're we're quickly closing the gap and 16 is more than acceptable for anyone even anyone that's serious about gaming including myself so. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it, it is impressive, and you know, I, I love the idea that uh, it's hopefully going to really open up the projection category to, uh, uh, you know, there's nothing quite like the the big screen experience, whether it's whether it's movies or games, and uh, being able to open up to that uh, uh, that customer base and uh, really give people a nice experience. Uh, it, it's a great it's a great thing. Um, we should also point out uh, that this projector, as you mentioned, it's 4K, of course, HDR support, 3D support on this projector right. as well right so yeah yeah, yeah. and 3d still is a big selling point for us because mm-hmm. tvs have dropped it so oh, yeah. you and you yeah yeah you'd be amazed at the number of people that are purchasing our 1080p and 4k projectors because we continue to support 3d yeah no so, our, our, absolutely our readers get mad when when a new home theater projector comes out that doesn't have 3d <laughs> capability so <laughs> Yeah, it's really you, know, you know, some people have a pretty decent library. I mean, not just a 4K Blu-ray, but also a video files too, right? Yeah. So the ability to go back and, you know, watch a lot of user content is really important, right? So yeah. I think that's where sort of the TV guys were like, okay, we'll drop it. But to be honest, you sort of alienated a lot of people as well. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, they, they, they certainly did. And uh, uh, let's talk a little bit about the Cinemax P2, which of course right. is a, sort of a completely different weed. Now that's been out for a while now. Um, right ultra short yeah. throw laser projector right right i mean p2 is our second gen um you know and it represents you know what i call tv replacement um when we started this venture it was back with 1080p with uh, gt5500 and you know even prior to us releasing the first 1080p ultra short throw i used it at home for about like nine months you know as we tried to decide is this a market you know that has room for growth and, and a market we want to go after and, uh, you know, after spending some time with it, you know, it was like, yes, right. Ultra short throw, it goes in the same place the television does. 
um, you can use a screen or you can use a wall. Um, I actually painted a wall using that Sherwood, that Sherwood and Williams paint. Uh-huh. Yeah. That, that, yeah. 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 You guys have checked out and that worked out extremely well, right? Contrast and brightness and color was impressive. So, um, yeah, that TV replacement market. So doing it with 4k for us was a huge milestone, you yeah. know, 4k glass lens, ultra short throw HDR, multiple HDMI 2.0 smart home. So, um, you know, a really good product and it's, it is done well for us and a lot of customers are happy. And it's one of my favorite products as well, because you really can't do better than a product in which you can place where the TV goes and then do a hundred, 100 inches, 120. Yeah. And even some customers go beyond that, right? You know, and I tell them, hey, you're okay to do it. You know, you, you, know, so, so, you know, in terms of support, you're on your own. But for the better part, really, you only lose the corners in terms of focus. Right. So right. for a lot of people going 130, 140 it is okay because if you're just watching video content, you really never notice. So I'll, yeah, and I'll tell you what, you know, my sense because of, uh, because of course I've reviewed the projector and and lived with it myself for a while and uh, you know, one of the things that I really like aside from the price because at $3300 3299 this projector really it really falls into a sweet spot in that category not the cheapest yes. thing out there but yet the thing that brings the most value at the best price right now and that remains to be right. the same right 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 but, yeah no, i completely yeah, agree yeah but um, the you optics, know, yeah i'm sorry uh, go ahead oh no no as i say the the price point was, was very very important right because i mean if you look at it versus 75 and 85 inches that are premium you know oled or some of the others i mean it's still a fantastic price yeah absolutely and and to your point earlier you know you talk about blowing up the image one of the things that i really liked about this projector is that uh, i really thought the optics were or a little mm -hmm. cut above most of the others so you're starting at least from a sharper image uh, right. that you, you can then put sort of push out toward the edges of what's possible uh, right. What else? Let's see. Anything else that we should say about that? You know, it's, uh, um, smart home. I mean, you know, the smart home's big, so there's support for. Uh, we have an Alexa uh, smart home skill called Smart Home Next. Uh, we have a custom custom skill called Advanced Smart Projection. So you you know you can power on the projector, power it off, uh, change volume, and here uh, we do have full volume support in terms of, you know, change. So you can go, you know, Alexa, change volume to one or change volume to eighty seven. Mm -hmm. So you do have, yeah, you do have control over the full range of the volume of the sound bar. I'm sorry, and, my uh, Alexa in the room actually got triggered just now. Oh. While you were talking. <laughs> so, so, so did mine. It's right behind me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. So, um, yeah, so, um, you know, Alexa support, you know, and even looking at the analytics, because um, I actually handle our um, smart home uh, part of our strategy and our certification. And uh, in our analytics, power on and power off are the two most used uh, commands by far. I yeah, <laughs> yeah, well. yeah, 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 by far. I mean, they eat up about those two together represents about 80 percent of all command sent. Uh huh. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not surprised. We're, we're very lazy individuals. So uh. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, um, and then we have a Google Action as well. So uh, support for Google Assistant and Google Home and IFTT. Um, we have support for IFTT as well, right? right? If this, then that. And that's pretty cool if you actually work. And I did a demo uh, two years ago at uh, Infocom, if you remember, where um, I could use my hand to um, trigger a pause um you know using a camera or the ring doorbell one is great you can link it to the ring doorbell if someone rings the doorbell oh, no um, you know yeah 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 you can mute the volume that's very cool yeah right right yeah yeah right so being a little creative and we're going to be working to expand the iftt support so you can uh control other functions of the projector as well yeah and and you know what we should also before we move on to the next product we we, we got to talk about the sound system that's in that oh yes yes projector. Of it's it's really an all-in-one right. entertainment system right 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 it's uh two speakers it's four drivers ported so um you know it produces extremely good um highs mids and even see right there's no subwoofer but it's got decent lows as well Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, at 40 watts, we, we figured that's a good sweet spot. Um, you know, of course, you, you always got to control the cost to keep the, you know, to hit the price point. So, but yeah, yes, yeah, sound and that product's great. I mean, if you're not really big on having an AVR um, running speaker wires, 
<laughs> right. and things of that nature, then the the onboard sound is great. And you know, some customers use it, use P1 or P2 with an AVR, but then at nighttime, you know, because you know whether they have kids or a baby or the key uh, the noise down, then they'll fall back to the onboard uh, soundbar. Yeah, it gives it so, gives you it gives you a great uh, a really good uh, basic system to use there for sure, and I'm sure a lot of people just stick with that alone. I know that uh, I was able to just add a subwoofer to it just to give it that little extra bit of bottom right, uh-huh. end, and, and boy, it took it to an entirely different level. It really is. Yeah, a- yeah. I I spent time it's testing sub subwoofers from several brands, and yeah, yeah. You add a sub, and it gives you that kick. <laughs> yeah, with that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you, and, and, you know, and, and like I said, for a lot of people, that's more than enough because not everyone is into having five one or having Atmos. I mean, I'm big audio person, so I even run Atmos in the bedroom. Um, but you know, <laughs> but for a lot of people, you know, like if I was to take the girlfriend, for instance, the sound bar is all she'd need, and she'd never care about anything else, right? right? So, <laughs> so a, a lot of people, you know, you have, you know, how it is in the home. The one, the person who purchased it is not the only one using it. So, sure. <laughs> Sure. Okay. So let's let's get Jeff in here and talk a little bit about uh, uh, some of the commercial product. And and I guess the the the, the projector that uh, Jeff you want to really get into is the the ZU seven twenty T, right? And it's uh, and it's short throw companion. Absolutely. So uh, these are actually really great. The the ZU seven twenty T that you mentioned first, um, it's really kind of a, a single in its class. It's it's really the first um, seventy five hundred lumens projector. Uh, that we have that um, is is a fixed lens uh, model. It's in the pro scene, so professional install, um, but doesn't have the the weight uh, and and really the the size, the chassis size, the ID size that you would see in a lot of the comparable inter, uh, interchangeable lens projectors. So you have something that's fixed lens. You have something that is you know super high brightness, um, is you know HDR 4K compatible. Um, and can really, really just uh, give you such a really crisp uh, image. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we were, uh, and and this is this is another product that we have very favorably reviewed, uh, and and it really stands out both, as you say, for the compact, uh, the compact chassis and the attached lens, uh, but also for the, the the lumens at the price four thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars on the street, uh, yeah. unless that's changed, right? And yeah. That's- uh, that's and that's current. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know, just a tremendous amount of brightness in a in a very affordable package. Um, that, Absolutely. Uh, I mean, you do get a lot of bang for your buck with this model. Um, mm-hmm. um, not just you know that you get the the one point eight zoom. Um, and one of the cool things about it is the um, that it does support uh, or it is Android based. Um, so not a lot of the, these models are are Android based. So we're starting to come out with more of these. Uh, Android-based pro scene models um, that are really great um, can really integrate. You know, give you the ability to not have to have uh, an input source if you're just trying to do you know some kind of video playback. Yeah, it was one of the things that our reviewer pointed out uh, that he really really liked about it. He basically sort of dubbed it as you know leave the PC behind. So uh, basically, you have apps, functional apps that that work on the Android system that allow you to. Uh, uh, pull either pull things uh, off the internet or off of uh, uh, drive, right? And you can also, you know, uh, you know, obviously plug in a USB. Um, mm-hmm. One of the cool things it does have uh, an HDMI out as well. Um, and oh. and I actually wanted to mention too here that um, uh, one of the cool thing, <laughs> another cool thing I just keep building up on, right, um, is that it uh, it is it has the built in uh, edge blending and, and warping here. Um, oh, wow. So you're, there's no need for for an external device to to be able to accomplish that. Um, mm-hmm. You access it right from the on screen display, and it's actually super super easy to do. So makes installation uh, quite simple. Yeah, and 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 that stuff is important. Uh, you know, this especially a projector like this. It's uh, I, I take it this is viewed as an installation projector, but yet okay. it's sort of compact and lightweight enough that you could probably move yeah, it around for ab- large kind absolutely. Of um, it's you know it's it's about half of the the weight and size uh, of what you'd expect you know of of most of the competitors out there um, so right. significantly less um you know i mean you get uh, somebody a little bit stronger you could probably do a one man installation on that <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah yeah and it's a uh, uh what's the resolution on this uh, model yeah so this is a wxga resolution right um and and uh, although it is 4K compatible, so meaning you know you can uh, hook up 4K content, um, which would you know automatically be uh, uh, downscaled uh, to be able to pr- uh, display on this projector as well. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I guess uh, the only other thing probably we should mention uh, it's got a it's got a pretty uh, well equipped jack pack uh, as well. The connection panel is fairly built out. Yeah, it is. You know, it's definitely uh, in line with with being you know kind of a like I said a pro scene pro AV uh, projector from you know twelve volt trigger uh, USB. It has two HDMI inputs, one of those for the the four K as well as that HDMI out. Um, you know, three D sync. Uh, audio control panel, obviously RS-232 and RJ-45, mm-hmm. uh, HD, HD base T. Uh, it is, you know, it is very, very fully equipped. Um, yep. uh, along with that, um, I'd actually mentioned that uh, we've actually come up with something called a quick switch. Um, and mm-hmm. the quick switch function allows you to, when you're doing like um, uh, blending, you know, multiple projectors put together and you're trying to program them, um, you can actually um, basically program uh, an ID for each projector. Um, and then you can use one single remote um, to control all of them. And so when you select a particular one, you know, number two projector, um, you're not changing the settings from the other projectors, you know, uh, with that same remote because you've, you know, basically identified it, that projector with that particular number. I so, see. I see. So you have a so, single remote to program the different projectors. And you can basically just assign the keypad to... Uh, Right. So each, in, in the uh, in the OSD, right in the on screen display, the settings, you'd actually be able to assign the ID for each projector. Interesting. Yeah, I could see how that could be a, a helpful feature. Uh, you know, I, I wanted to ask you guys, because we're talking about obviously there's been a, a, a tremendous growth of laser in the commercial sector. Everything's sort of switching over. Optima uh, has also, I think, made some some sort of. Uh, uh, some um, some real gains, or at least starting to put their their the company's foot in the water with regard to laser on the consumer side. Not just not just with the uh, the the UST products, which we're seeing laser in the home theater area in those new UST living room projectors. But um, you know, we reviewed a while back the the GT ten ninety HDR, which is an affordable ten eighty p using a laser engine. Uh, you know, where do y'all see this this going? So, um, you know, you know, definitely, um, well, you know, one of the reasons for the GT 1090 and actually the HZ 39 HDR, uh, uh, they're both 1080p HDR. They have a one HDMI 2.0 port, right. Which allows you to accept, you know, for, you know, cause most content out there is 4k HDR. So if you want to get advantage of HDR, we'll accept the signal and then extract the HDR metadata. Right, so yeah. with that, yeah, yeah, right. So it was with that, right? It's 1080p HDR, and you know we started that 1080p HDR because um, you know uh, 1080p HDR for a lot of people is good enough. Um, you know HDR really is the star of the show, even when you're talking about 4K. So um, so the goal here was first, you know, first let's see if the market is ready for some laser, right? At a mm-hmm. price point that's above 1000. And, you know, we've demonstrated that, you know, that answer is yes. <laughs> so here really our goal moving forward is to start transitioning a lot of the home line into laser. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, cause we think it'll offer, you know, the benefit of course of light source life um, in, in addition to better contrast and near zero maintenance and, you know, all, all the other things that come along with it. Um, yeah. The improved color. Of course, right? So, and all the things that come along with this. So, you know, definitely it's a big part of our strategy. You've already seen a laser transition on our data side, right? Mm-hmm. Our, our, mid, our mid-range to high now is primarily laser with very little lamp left. Mm-hmm. So, and that will continue. And then, of course, on the Pro AV side, it's pretty much all laser now, <laughs> right. Right? right? Including Jeff's product, the, the 720T, you know, we have had the 506, 606, 403, 406. And then of course the, the higher end products too, like our, even our 4K, the ZK 1050 and ZK 750. Yep, so sure. definitely now that the cost of integrating laser has come down, you know, significantly, significantly over the last couple of years, it's, it's, it's doable for more, you know, outside of the pro AV line. So, yeah, I think, and I think you're going to find a very excited consumer base about that, uh, Billy, because the, you know, what I've been hearing from readers, you know, they, they've been waiting for good, good quality images from affordable laser that's been available, but it's been available primarily at the high end up until this point. And and some of the early attempts to do it for uh, on the cheap, so to speak, 
weren't really very successful. And now here we are with products like the like the GT 1090, which uh, I thought had a very respectable uh, I- image uh, in right. a 1080p. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. but a good la- a good quality, you know, laser home theater image that you could live with. And, and we're seeing some other products that are coming out now in that, you know, $3,000 and under category. So, uh, yeah, I think we're in for some interesting times. We'd be very interested to see, uh, you know, what Optima has coming up uh, in the coming. Yeah, months. yeah. I mean, I spent a lot of time, especially at the start of the pandemic on, you know, assistant on social media and talking with customers and Early on in the pandemic, the one product that everyone was consistently asking me about was GT1090 HDR. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 extremely consistent. So I literally myself sort of watched interest in that product rise and rise and rise and, along with the run rate. So, so gotcha. we're pretty happy with that. Yeah, we're pretty okay. happy with that. All right. Well, uh, is there anything else you guys want to add before we uh, before we uh, uh, depart company here? Uh, anything else said about what's going to be in the booth or about the company in general? Um, new things. So I think it's just for on my side, if you're home, it's USD 35 and P2. So I think we covered that pretty well. Okay. Yeah, um, I think we so, had the uh, uh, the 720T, uh, the TST is basically the short throw version of that. Um, ah, right. Obviously, you know, more flexibility, more options when it comes to uh, uh, different installations, you know, different uh, venues. If you're going to be, you know, uh, houses of worship or, you know, uh, golf simulators is a big thing nowadays. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, interesting you say that because uh, in the pandemic, apparently there was a kind of a, a mad run on uh, golf sims <laughs> so, oh, yeah. uh, and people building their own. But uh, oh, yeah, yeah that, <laughs> that, that makes a lot of sense, actually. And, and laser is a great option. High quality laser is a great option for a golf simulator. So, it really, yeah, yeah, yeah. you don't have to worry about you know the the changes in in the in the brightness and mm-hmm. and the maintenance is you know changing bulbs all the time that you would in a on a uh, lamp uh, model. So um, yep. definitely a, a huge benefit. Yeah, um, and and is there a difference in the price on the ST version? What does that go for? Um, very similar in price. Um, it's almost identical to be honest. So you just pick the one that works best for your application, right? And there's a you know couple of a uh, couple of differences, but overall, obviously the throw ratio. But I mean, um, a couple of you know differences. Are, otherwise, it's, it's almost identical. The same size chassis, weight size is almost identical. Um, just what depends on what you need. Um, and I just wanted to add in here that. Um, one of the things that we're actually going to be showcasing as well is our IFPDs. And I know this is a little bit different, you know, coming from projectors, um, mm. but there is a, a transition that we're seeing from the interactive projectors or interactive whiteboards uh, going over to the interactive displays. Um, okay. And so, uh, which is, is huge for us because um, there is a huge um, push in the education market, especially um, where we're seeing a lot of the, uh, the outdated, you know, interactive uh, whiteboards being transitions over to these new 4K touch boards um, in, yeah. the, in the classroom or even in the corporate boardrooms and stuff like that. So, yeah. And I, I've seen some of your, some of your interactive panels demoed at the shows in the past uh, and, and they're pretty impressive. How large do they get? I mean, where does that top out and where does it start making more sense to think about a projector? Yeah, so so we currently have up to eighty six inches, um, which is is still a good size. Um, if you're you know in a in a large conference room, even even classrooms, um, if you're looking at you know obviously going into a, a large uh, lecture hall or something, um, at that point it becomes a little bit harder to see. Um, although we have seen an integration where um, they have you know an interactive board in the front, and then you have some projectors basically to duplicate the uh, the image. Um, right. Okay, great, great, great. Yeah, like I said, and it's a great way because it offers a lot more, a lot more uh, flexibility. You know, a lot more interaction and collaboration, which is obviously the way that things are going right now. Sure. Well, guys, thank you very, very much for joining me today, and uh, thank you for joining us for Projection Expo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh-huh. Absolutely, we look forward to it. Right, things are finally starting to get back, you know, to normal. So. Yep. yep. Well, I think it's, well, well, it's digital. I think it's a good start. <laughs> absolutely. I think I, I'm hoping that the next time we see each other, it'll be in person. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks, yeah, Rob. Yeah. We appreciate it. Same here. All right. Thanks. Thanks very much. Take care. Uh-huh. Okay. Thanks, Rob.